Well, in 1971, I was part of a group called the Don't Make a Wave Committee, and it was set up to oppose nuclear testing in the Aleutian Islands. And uh, we had to come up with an idea, how can we protest this effectively? And um, uh, environmentalists got together with the Quakers because the Quakers had sent a boat down to a Bikini Atoll in 1956 to protest nuclear testing by the United States. So we decided, well, we, we need to get a boat and send it up to Amchik Island to protest. So at one of the early meetings um, we had of the Don't Make a Wave Committee, uh, somebody left and flashed a peace sign. And then Bill Darnell, who was at the meeting, he said, make it a Greenpeace. And Bob Hunter said, great name for the boat. So we named that boat the Greenpeace and uh, the Greenpeace too. We sent two boats up there. And in the next year, we changed the name of the Don't Make a Wave Committee to the Greenpeace Foundation. Now, I was with Greenpeace until 1977, but the problem was is that it was all about taking pictures and protesting and hanging banners, and I just got tired of seeing whales and seals dying, so I thought there was a need for a more aggressive approach. So I took this um, strategy, which I called uh, uh, aggressive nonviolence. <clears throat> We're going to aggressively intervene, but not going to hurt anybody. And uh, that's what uh, established the Sea Shepherd uh, Society with as an approach to aggressive nonviolence. And after 50 years, we've never uh, we never killed or injured anybody, but we were effectively were able to uh, intervene against hundreds and hundreds of illegal uh, operations. Yeah, you may be hurt though, because when we when we, when we see the videos of your action, we like I'm like, whoa, this is extremely dangerous. So you may not hurt other people and. Thank you for that. But you may get hurt. You have you ever been like like in a dangerous situation well, where you could get hurt? I've been beat up a few times and everything, but uh, the, the you know generally nobody has really been, been injured. But the risks are always there. But as I used to I always ask the crew, are you prepared to risk your life to protect a whale? And uh, if you're not, then I don't need you. I need people who are yeah. willing to take that risk. Now, when reporters have said to me, well, that's asking an awful lot to ask people to risk their life to protect a whale. And I say, well, why? We ask young people to risk their life, to give their life for real estate, flags, religion, and all sorts of Many nonsense. Time, yeah. I think it's a far more noble cause to, uh, to risk your life to protect an endangered species or a threatened habitat. I mean, if we really valued uh, the natural world, as much as we value an oil well in, say, Iraq or, uh, or, uh, or somebody's flag, I mean, then we were going to be willing to fight for it. But we're not asking people to kill people for this. We're asking people to, to, you know, to take a courageous stand and uh, to protect what they can. Are you actually asking this question at the interview? Like, would you be taking the risk to hurt yourself to save a well? Yes, yeah, it is. It's not rhetorical. It's no, not no, like no. a symbol. No, no, no. It's it's a real question. And when I met Paul the first time in 2005, I went to him and I said, "Oh, wow! Well, if what you say like it echoes what I feel like, and I want to get involved." And he, I remember perfectly. He said, "Well, are you are you willing to risk your life for a whale?" And and my answer was yes. I had never seen a whale <laughs> at the time, but for me the answer was quite obvious. And he said, "Well, then apply and and join." And a few months later, I was on the ship. So this is really, and this is a question that you have to take seriously because it may happen that we are in situations where we put our life at risk and you know where you're stepping in. I mean, it, it doesn't come as a surprise. It's not for everyone, it's fine. Mm -hmm. But when you are on campaigns, this is, uh, this is part of it. Yeah. And it's not because we are like kamikaze or we want like to, it's just because we are facing people who, um who don't have limits sometimes you know and who are ready to to yeah to injure you or put you in situations where you could uh, potentially die that's something you you take into account when you join i think it's as you said earlier it's also maybe because that you are now reconnected to nature so for you a whale or a human has the the same importance You, you would Everything, say that? Everything, yeah, I, I never felt like, okay, um, my life is more important or is worth more than a whale's life. And it doesn't mean that I don't value my life. Absolutely not. Yeah. You know, it's mm -hmm. just that I value the life of a whale mm -hmm. because we are all connected again, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, and to me, these differences that we can make um, are the roots of... Uh, of wars among us and, and yeah. to the, towards the natural world, yeah. You, I read a story where at one point you thought you were going to die or to be crushed by a boat. Can you, uh, can you tell about yeah, this, this, it was this a, story? It was the Antarctica well, campaign. 
it was the Antarctica campaign in 2005, the winter 2005, and we were looking for the Nishin Maru, which is the the whaling, uh, the factory ship of the whaling fleets. It's a huge vessel. Uh, it's 8,000 tons, and we were on the Falemowat at the time, a, a small, uh, the small vessel that Sea Shepherd had at the time. We had only one one ship. And miraculously, we found the Nishin Maru. It was on the um, on the next day after Christmas, and it was um, there was a storm. I, I remember the swell was eight meters high, and Paul was like, "Oh, cool! We found we found the Nishin Maru, so we're gonna block the road. We, we're not gonna let him pass." And um, and the the Nishin Maru was just heading straight towards us, and and really the the thing is. Because that ship was so big yeah, and because yeah. of the swell and we are at the other edge of the world. I mean, there was nobody else but us. Um, it was uh, going to hit us and we we knew that it would cut our ship in two and basically we would sink right away. So we were all in survival suits, uh, surviving suits. And the first officer came in and said, OK, collision in two minutes. And I remember all we could hear was the... Um, alarm sound of the Nishin Maru with the recorded voice saying, get out of the way, get out of the way. And Paul is saying, we're not getting out of the way or we may as well go home, you know? So you're, you're con in connection, radio, radio connection with them. You're talking to one another. No, Paul or, was saying or, that. I mean, uh, you, you mean with the with the Nishin Maru yeah, or with Paul? Yeah, with the, oh, the Nishin Maru. Yeah, we we talk with. I mean, on the radio. Oh, but, the radio. But the thing is, he 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 was. This was loudspeaker, like okay, warning okay. on loudspeaker. Wow. I remember yeah. that. That was uh, that was uh, quite impressive. And but anyway, so telling us collision in two minutes, we know that we are yeah. gonna sink. Like right. And I remember it was an important moment for me because because on that moment I thought. Okay, so this is the end. That's it. We are all going to die today. So how do you feel when this happens? Because when I told Paul, yeah, I'm ready to risk my life for a well, while, I'm, I'm yeah. in Paris. You know? <laughs> so even though That's I felt... It's a concept, yeah. Well, the thing is, I've, I, I felt it, but it's one thing to, to say it when you're not Absolutely. in the situation and how you behave when you are actually facing mm. the situation and it becomes a reality. And to me, it was an important moment because although I felt afraid, I think we were all afraid <laughs> because, okay, you think, okay, this is the end of it. Um, I had no regret whatsoever. And there was no other place in the world where I wanted to be. I felt deep inside that I was exactly where I was supposed to be. And if today was the last day, so be it, because I was doing what I felt was right. And to me, it has been very important also for the rest of my um, engagement because um I knew and I know I, I'm on the right track. Mm -hmm. And I remember, that's for the funny part, I remember it crossed my mind at that moment, but I, I thought, oh, wow, it's, it's easier to sign petition, huh? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know than it getting is. out there. And so, but anyway, and if, if I'm telling the story, it's because uh, the captain of the Nishin Maru just changed course at the last minute. And I remember Paul saying that, Okay, we have uh, 45 crews, 23 nationalities on board. Just imagine like the oh, yeah. huge the diplomatic um, yeah, clash that Japan is going to have to go through if they kill uh, um, activists in a whale sanctuary, you know, from all these countries. I mean, it's going to be terrible. And he bet on that and he was right because he changed the course at the, at the last minute. So, yeah. It was a it was a life uh, life uh, changing moment for me. Wow! Yeah, passion, engagement. That's that's very impressive from an external person like me. I'm like, are you crazy? But it's so important, as you say, that we reconnect and uh, reconnect and protect our nature. Essential. So I only feel gratitude for guys like you that I cannot do myself this kind of <laughs> uh, uh, defense. But yeah, thank you very much for that. Well, you know, it's it's important, I think, when we tell these kinds of stories to also get the message across that this is not yeah. the only way no, no, no. or the best yeah. way to, to get involved. And I think it's it's so important that everyone does what fits him, you know, 
And this is not for everyone. What, Absolutely, what yeah, yeah. And it's it's as important as I don't know a teacher, a lawyer, an artist that's gonna do what what yeah. it's meant to do. And uh, yeah, these stories are impressive. But the only purpose of these stories is, as I said earlier, is is to trigger questioning. You yeah. know, to yeah. think, okay, maybe <clears throat> that's important, and then find a way to get involved uh, your own way. You know. And like by doing yeah. podcast, podcasts, for example, is one is yeah. one great the, way. The strength of an ecosystem is in diversity. Therefore, the strength of a movement yeah. is in diversity. So that approach can be litigation, legislation, education, direct activism. It all works towards the same end. But each and every one of us has to say, what am I good at? What are my talents? And how can I utilize those talents to make this a better world? And so, you know, I just happen to like be able to operate a ship and you know, go after uh, people on the high seas, but <laughs> but at the same time, the uh, you know other people are very effective in their in their other approaches. And but most importantly is the fact that one person can make a difference. One person can change yeah. the world. I mean, because of Diane Fossey, we still have mountain gorillas in Rwanda. You know, because of David Wingate, so most people haven't heard of, but because of this uh, wildlife know. biologist in Bermuda, the Bermuda storm petrel did not go extinct. And I can't think of anything more noble than because you've interfered you or intervened, uh, a species was saved from going extinct.